Right, so code spray is an additive manufacturing process that we're using here in GA to manufacture large components. The reason we're using this for additive manufacturing is because the code spray process itself uh, can provide us very unique characteristics. Many additive modalities use melting and rapid solidification in order to achieve your final goal. Uh, since code spray is a solid state process and you don't have melting of the material, it can enable uh, materials that are crack prone during rapid solidification for example and also the fact that you don't have oxidation and you can make very dense deposits in the air spray condition. The process does not require a controlled atmosphere which enables uh, production of very large components uh, for example large aviation cases or rocket nozzles and axismatical parts of large sizes. Uh, I believe the cold spray has to do two different things. Uh, one is meeting properties, complex geometry, and at cost. So, meeting properties is uh, the work that we need to put into uh, customizing the spray process itself, uh, manipulating feedstock, uh, process parameters, and many other things that uh, optimize the deposition process itself. Geometry is a little complicated in uh, cold spray because unlike a 3D printer that basically simplify a very complex 3D geometry into a, a planar solution which basically slice a very complex 3D geometry in very simple planes. In cold spray we are spraying in 3D so our environment is already more complex. In order to do that uh, you have to develop the tools that enable the you know, developing toolpath for very complex shapes in the 3D environment. And uh, for example, traditional thermal spray processes uses a uh, robot and a turntable, which gives you 8 degrees of freedom. For some of the parts that we are spraying, uh, that's not enough. So we added a second robot. But it's not simply adding a second robot. Uh, you not only increase the degrees of freedom to 12, but you also need to control it in a fully coordinated motion. Since we are working in a 3D environment that requires very complex toolpaths, uh, we are using some machine learning techniques in order to not just uh, strategize how do you build the part, but also to modify the path in situ. And when we are measuring what we are depositing, we can correct if something doesn't go according to plan. That enables us not to just to simplify the process, but uh, get to a result much quicker time and reduce cost of the operation.